Wow, what a way to start the day. Can we have another round of applause? West Palin Steppers. You guys are awesome. Oh, they have more. Yay, go ahead. <laughs>
go and do more? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, you're sitting, you have more? Do, would you like to do one more? I think we're all pretty inspired. Okay, one short one. Okay. day a better day so thank you from the bottom of our hearts all right good morning everyone oh come on come on let's have a little more enthusiasm look we just like heard from extraordinary talent good morning, good morning. okay that's a little better my name is Jane Golden and I am the executive director of the mural arts program for the city of Philadelphia and I'm honored and humbled to be here today uh, for the press preview for this brand new mural honoring Ed Bradley Designed by the wonderful, awesome, talented artist, Ernel Martinez. I'm humbled by his talent. Um, I think you, we all know Ed Bradley and what a presence he was to all of us as it relates to American journalism. I want to start by expressing how honored all of us are at Mural Arts for getting to be part of this really exciting project. Um, we are so thankful to the CBS Corporation and the Ed Bradley Family Foundation. Can we have a round of applause for people who helped make this happen? Ed Bradley was born right here in Philadelphia, and he is indeed a local, national, and international legend. He made waves all around the country and across the world in an era where many tend to play fast and loose with the facts. Ed Bradley stood for journalistic integrity. In his long career, which included 26 years as an anchor on CBS's, CBS News 60 Minutes, and I love 60 Minutes, um, Ed Bradley broke down racial barriers and built an incredible body of work in broadcast journalism. He was really a hero. As we prepare to dedicate a mural with his image right here in his home neighborhood, I'm reminded how important it was that Ed Bradley was the first black television correspondent to cover the White House. He showed the entire country that the perspectives of people of color are vital to all of us. Representation matters. On the television screen, young people were able to see Ed Bradley and they saw someone who looked like them someone from West Philadelphia, someone educated at an HBCU who could make his voice heard on a global scale. At Mural Arts, we believe really deeply that art ignites change. And what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes I mean that a building gets turned into a work of art, but I think more often than not, what we mean is that change happens in the people who view the mural and people who participate on the mural, whether it's at schools or rec centers or libraries, or our work in prisons or with people coming home or people in the behavioral health system, it really doesn't matter from the far northeast to southwest 
everywhere across this city, you can feel the power of art at work. We believe that art is connected to who we are as a people, and the question of who gets representing and who does the representing is key. It's so important to affirm who we are as individuals and as a community, and we can do that through art and art making. And it's especially important to the work we do with all of you. We have 2,000 young people in our after school summer and during the school day programs, and I believe that it shouldn't just be 2,000, it should be 10,000, it should be 100,000, 200,000. Every young person in the city of Philadelphia deserves access to art and to art education. This is why it was so important that we worked with students at the St. Ignatius School, at the Blankenburg School, at Mastery Man School, right here in West Philadelphia, to teach students not just about mural making, but about Ed Bradley's legacy and the significance he had in our world. I'd like to invite everyone throughout West Philadelphia and beyond to join us, we hope, if it's not rainy, let's keep our fingers crossed, this Saturday, May 19th, from noon to 2 o'clock, as we celebrate this extraordinary mural at the corner of Belmont and Wylusing Avenue. We'll have great performances from the Urban Guerrilla Orchestra to the Dixie Hummingbirds to Sister Cities Girl Choir to the Universal African Dance Company and Drummond's Ensemble, plus appearances by legendary journalists, legendary, like really legendary in capital letters, Steve Cross, Croft, Charlene Hunter Galt, who I like, I'm such a fan of Charlene Hunter Galt, and Philly's own Yuki Washington from CBS3. Yay! There'll be food and dancing and music. It'll be really fun. You should come, bring your family and friends. And if it rains, don't despair. We have a rain date, and that rain date is June 16th. So if it rains, we're still going to do it. Um, and we have a few people who are going to speak today, but I just want to say just um, how deeply, again, how deeply honored we are to capture the image, hold on to the legacy of Ed Bradley. I feel our world is a crazy world now filled with turmoil. And journalists are our system of checks and balances. We need them. We need to honor them and thank them for telling us the truth, right? And for all of you who are in the audience today, I know some of you came to the 60 Minutes studio with us, and that was an awesome, wonderful, inspiring day. You can be journalists. You can do anything you want. And so we want to do everything at Mural Arts to make available every opportunity and option possible to young people. We want you to know you can have an idea and you can bring it to fruition and you can make our world a better place. Thank all of you in the audience. So I want to um, start our program by introducing Patricia Blanchett. Patricia is married to Ed Bradley. She is a force of nature. She is incredibly talented and insightful and has, like, she just has a, a joy of life that is absolutely contagious. Um, this project would not be possible without her. Um, she cares deeply about young people. This is so clear to me. She cares deeply about education and the arts. And we need people in this world like Patricia Blanchett. I am so thrilled that she's here with us today, and I am honored to call her a colleague and a friend. Patricia. Thank you, Jane. Hi, everyone. My name's Patricia Blanchet, you know that already. And on behalf of my late husband, Ed Bradley, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out on this rainy day in the great city of Philadelphia, a beloved city that I called home for half a dozen years after attending Swarthmore College, and a city that Ed adored and to continue to call home all his life, even as he ventured far and wide across the globe to live in places like Paris, Cambodia, Vietnam, Washington, D.C., and finally New York. As the old saying goes, there really is no place like home. So even though he was a renowned citizen of the world, Ed remained a devoted and proud Philadelphian his entire life. 
I'd like to thank Jane Golden and her incredibly hardworking team at Mural Arts. This would not be possible without them. They are, as I like to say, a tiny but mighty organization. The work you do, Jane, in this city is unbelievable. And we are so thankful to everything that you do here. Let's give Jane a round of applause, please. I'd also like to thank CBS for um, helping to provide some of the funding. The visionary artist, um, Ernel Martinez, for his beautiful work. The equally visionary, Leroy McCarthy, whose idea this was to begin with. And all of our amazing partners for their efforts on behalf of my late husband with a spectacular mural dedication. And finally, I want to thank the Powelton Steppers and Drummers. Weren't they amazing? I'm deeply grateful to them. A native son of Philadelphia, Ed grew up in the 40s and 50s in a part of town known poignantly as the Black Bottom, which stretched from 32nd Street to 40th Streets and from University to Lancaster Avenues. I don't have to tell you that this once vital, close-knit, and thriving community was so-called black then, back then predominantly because of its African-American residents who lived there for the affordable housing. Ed was raised in the Black Bottom by his single mother, Gladys, who, like many of her hardworking neighbors of the time, held down not one but two jobs, hers as a domestic worker. She did this so that little Butch Bradley, that was her little name for him, would want for nothing and aspire to everything, making sure especially that he got the best private school education possibly, starting right here with St. Ignatius. Ed never forgot his mother's devoted sacrifices for him, her only son, just as he never forgot being told by his teachers, who saw early on the brilliant light and undeniable promise in a black bottom child's eyes that he could be and do anything that he could dream up. And dream and be and do and aspire he did from the very beginning. Ed stayed curious and he stayed hungry aspiring constantly all the way through his remarkable life and career. First, as a graduate of Cheney University, then as a public school teacher and principal in Philadelphia, then as a jazz disc jockey and known as Little Jazz Bo and as a reporter at WDAS Radio, then as a journalist at CBS in a wide range of jobs over the course of about 40 years, including a stringer and reporter for WCBS Radio, principal correspondent at CBS Reports, White House correspondent, anchor of both CBS Sunday Night News and the news magazine Street Stories, and finally, as co-editor of 60 Minutes. In his legendary career as an iconic broadcast journalist for nearly 40 years, Ed racked up some 21 Emmys, as well as countless other prestigious awards, including DuPonts, Peabody's, NEBJ's, and Pulitzer's. All along the way of his storied career, he did well while also doing good. And I want you to remember that. He did well while also doing good, becoming one of the most trusted, respected, and beloved of journalists of our modern times. Ed's, Ed's life and achievements had a profound and lasting impact on all of us here today. He was an exceptional chronicler and interpreter in a profession that, at its core, he believed to be primarily about public service and education, the very cornerstones of our American democracy. One of the best investigative reporters of his era, Ed brought intelligence, balance, sensitivity, integrity, and civility to the over 500 stories that he did. A master in journalism, Ed delved deeply into the most relevant issues and events of his times, not only critically shaping our perceptions of the world, but changing our lives as well, shedding light where there was darkness and helping us all to make sense of an increasingly complex reality. As Pre President Clinton once said of Ed, and I paraphrase, he always sang in the key of reason. I can't tell you how many people come up to me today and ask, hmm, I wonder what Ed would think about what was going on today. And I wonder what kind of stories Ed would be doing today. Now let's get back for a minute to the black bottom. The 1960s and 70s saw the mass displacement of an estimated five to 10,000 residents from the once proud neighborhood known as the Black Bottom. Urban renewal became urban removal, or Negro removal, as the writer James Baldwin so aptly put it. 
the residential neighborhood was permanently transformed. Just a few years before his death, Ed and I took a nostalgic drive together around Philadelphia so we could show one another memorable places from our lives lived here, I'll bet decades apart. There was my big house on Spruce Street, which I shared with six friends from college. There was WDAS Radio, where Ed got his start in radio, refined his ear for jazz, and developed his love of reporting. There was his favorite Italian restaurant in South Philly with the best baked ziti on earth. There was my food co-op that was run by old hippies, where I worked long hours in exchange for a few hairy carrots and gritty collard greens. As we rounded the corners of West Philly, Ed was filled with longing and sadness when he couldn't show me his childhood home, or any of the houses of his old neighborhood for that matter. They had long been gone already for many, many years. I remember his saying how strangely unanchored he felt that there was little visible trace of his old community left. Today, with this monumental mural in Ed's honor, not only do you pay fitting tribute to one of the city's most celebrated native sons, not only do you honor Ed as you acknowledge and maintain his most essential outstanding values, transforming his life into a truly living legacy, but you welcome him home once again in style, in greatness, with safe anchorage and everlasting relevance. I'd like to remind each of you that there's grace in each of your paths, singular and collective, as we remember all that we knew and loved about Ed all that we miss about having him with us now, and all that we can still aspire to be as individuals, as a, nation, as a nation, and even as citizens of the world, because he impacted our lives so profoundly. His afterglow is something fierce, so bright and hot and vast that it's uncontainable and all-encompassing. Embrace it. With Ed in your hearts and little Butch Bradley in your feet, Walk the walk down Ed Bradley Way, the Philadelphia street named after him about two years ago, again, thanks to Leroy McCarthy. Then swing up Belmont Avenue to admire this beautiful mural. In so doing, I hope you'll hear in your own footsteps the resonance of one man's remarkable life and career that stands for so much aspiration, hard work, humanity, beauty, justice, and truth, filled with the legacy of his mother Gladys and his community in the Black Bottom, and filled with the promise of a greater future that is now yours to make. Thank you, everyone. That was beautiful and completely inspiring. Thank you, Patricia. One more round of applause, really. That was so inspiring. This is so, such a great mural. This is such a great project. I'm so glad we're doing this. Like, I wake up every day enthusiastic. Are you all enthusiastic? Who here likes art? Raise your hand. Who here wants to work on another mural? Raise your hand. Okay, we're all ready. Art can change the world. I like that. Good. Okay, I'll be back in touch with all of you about our next project. <laughs> okay, now I want to welcome Rachel Ferguson, Director of Communications and Public Affairs at CBS2, and WLNY 1055. We are so grateful to the CBS Corporation and CBS3 Philly for their incredible support and great partnership throughout this project. Please welcome Rachel to the stage. Stage, the podium. Good morning. On behalf of CBS New York and CBS3, I'm excited to be here during the unveiling of this amazing mural for one of the most celebrated journalists in our media family, the legendary Ed Bradley. Last June, several students from three different schools in Philadelphia had the opportunity to visit the Broadcast Center in New York. They were given a tour. They spoke with representatives from CBS Corporation, CBS News, 60 Minutes, CBS 3, and CBS New York. They were able to learn about the individual's career paths in the industry. Most importantly, the genesis of the mural and the qualities Ed Bradley demonstrated. One of my colleagues described these qualities, truth, integrity, curiosity, but I want to add perseverance. This is an important quality to have in order for everyone to have success, both professionally and personally. During that day, I had the opportunity to spend time with many of the students that are here today. 
young people who were respectful, curious, and eager to learn. To all of you, I want to remind you that it's your responsibility to continue to be an active participant in your school and in the community. You have more choices and opportunities than any other generation before you. And like Ed Bradley, you can create a legacy that spans time, backgrounds, and borders. We, yes, I'm lumping myself in with this generation, we're a generation of selfies. We want to find the perfect angle, the perfect lighting, and ensure our faces look the best in any photo. And that's great. However, I encourage you to step outside of yourself, out of the frame, and try new things. Learn, meet new people, give back, be a leader, be a change maker, and start your legacy now. Thank you, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Lots of inspiration here. This is great. I also want to thank another project partner, the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists. PABJ President Melanie Roy is here with us today, and she is also the Director of Digital News for KYW News Radio 1060. Please welcome Melanie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists, we are honored to be here today to honor the life and legacy of Ed Bradley. Uh, PABJ is the oldest organization dedicated to the development of black journalists. We are also the founding chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists. I'd like to express our sincerest thanks to Mural Arts, led by Jane Golden, Patricia Blanchett, Ed Bradley's widow, and a very important partner in this project, Leroy McCarthy, Arnell Martinez, and CBS News. This mural will be displayed in the neighborhood where one of a generation's most significant journalist, journalism careers was launched. As Ed Bradley's boyhood home is nearby, as well as the original home of WDAS Radio. Ed broke barriers that paved the way for many other journalists of color, whether it was reporting at the White House or halfway around the world, it was his compassion, honesty, and encouraging people to courage that left a lasting legacy. We honor and remember Ed Bradley at a time when hard-hitting journalism is needed more than ever, and young journalists need to know that from humble beginnings, anything is possible. I'm hoping the legacy of Ed Bradley will grow to be much more than his image on a wall, but an inspiration to the community where it all began. In his own words, be prepared, work hard, and hope for a little luck. Recognize that the harder you work and the better prepared you are, the more luck you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. And you know, sometimes a project, you, you, you like have a vague idea and then somebody calls you and it just comes into focus. And I would call that person a catalyst. And that's what Leroy McCarthy is. Uh, Lee Roy McCarthy is really the driving force behind this project. He has been with us every step of the way. And when he thinks that we're slowing down, he is there to remind us to speed up. I love people like Leroy because I see myself in him. People always say I'm very tenacious. I like go back, go back, go back. That's why we've made it through five mayors in the city of Philadelphia. We never want to drop the ball. And Leroy is an amazing force of nature, and the world needs people like him. So I am thrilled that he is here with us today. Leroy, Leroy please come up to say a few words. Hello, everybody. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, thank you to Mural Arts, the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists, uh, the CBS Corporation for their support, and Ms. Patricia Blanchett for her drive and determination to support this project every step of the way moving forward and the artist Arnel Martinez for his contribution and his hands in creating this beautiful work of art. Um, young people, older people, elderly people, hopefully you'll be inspired by this artwork and moving forward create your own legacies for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
And now I would like Kayla McGuffey from St. Ignatius School to please come up and say a few words. Good morning, Ms. Blanchett, distinguished guests, members of CBS, and friends of Ed, Bre Ed Bradley. My name is Kayla McGuffey. I'm an eighth grader at our Mother Sorrow St. Ignatius School. Um, our students are happy to share in this wonderful event. Last year, we hosted the kickoff event for this project, and I was one of the lucky students who traveled to C the CBS building in New York. It was the first time I went to New York, my first time in a news station. I got to meet many successful men and women. And most importantly, I got to represent a school Ed Bradley attended and helped beautify my community. This is a beautiful mural honoring a memorable and hardworking man, and I'd like to congratulate everyone who worked on it and contributed to it, and thank you all. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Kayla. You made our day. This is wonderful, so wonderful. So now, last but certainly not least, um, I would like the artist to come up and say a few words, but let me just say something. That was great. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. So the art, Ernel Martinez um, is an amazing artist and teaching artist and muralist. He is multifaceted in that his talent knows no bounds. He is not just a painter, but he can work in all mediums. Um, he is also an extraordinary citizen of the city often involved in leading the way as it relates to social, civic, and political issues. Um, I personally feel honored, absolutely honored, to know him and to call him uh, a colleague and a friend, a mentor, and I would say always he is a source of inspiration to me and to Mural Arts. Ernell Martinez. Wow, uh, what an intro. Thank you very, Jane, thank you for that, that was wonderful. Um, what an honor to be here today. I am incredibly humbled to be a part of such a wonderful project and to be amongst such distinguished people. Um, thank you guys, you guys deserve a hand of applause just for all the work you guys have been doing. Um, but with that said, I wanna have a message to the young people. I think it's important that you guys understand, not Ed just as a journalist, or as a uh, visionary, uh, but that he's actually a part of the fabric of the city. Ed came from Philadelphia just like you guys, just, just like you guys when you guys are up. Uh, went to school out this way, and you know, when I was young, excuse me, when I was young, youngish, um, when you watch the news, although it could be scary, you needed someone to help you understand uh, exactly what was going on. And that's what Ed did. Ed was one of the sole voices, sole black voices on TV that could actually interpret and explain to you what was going on in the world. Now, um, there's a lot of scary things going on today, right, in the world. Around the world, there's stuff that's really scary and we don't know what's going on. And it's, it's, it's more important now than ever that we have uh, the media there to really frame things and to help us understand what's going on. And I encourage you guys, I encourage you guys to use Ed as a symbol of excellence of what you could achieve uh, if you really if you really determined and you put your heart and you commit to what you're doing okay guys so guys young people you are the future and this torch that Ed carried for so long is now being handed over to you okay guys so carry that burden and thank you guys for coming today and again I'm humbled and honored to be a part of this project he's great He's great. This is wonderful. Okay, so we, we um, have to ha just a few more thank yous, so just bear with me. Uh, we are a program that is part public and private, so we're always very grateful to our mayor, Mayor Kenny, and to Philadelphia City Council, and we're in Janie Blackwell's district, and we know she's here in spirit. Uh, it's budget time, so she couldn't make it. Patricia, we love you, and we're honored to work with you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, to the CBS Corporation, the Ed Bradley Family Foundation, and the Lomex Family Foundation. Again, a round of applause for our funders. <laughs> to our project partners, CBS3 Philly, 
A special thanks to, she's not here today, but Joanne Calabria, who started this project with us. <laughs> Joanne! And to the Philadelphia Association of Black Journalists. Thank you. Yay. To the schools that partnered with us and their leadership, St. Ignatius School and Senior Center. Blankenburg School, Philadelphia Learning Academy. To Leroy McCarthy. Ernell Martinez. Okay, so here are two community members who helped. They worked tirelessly on this. Amanada Calhoun and Betty Ferguson. Where are they? Woo! Thank you. Kathy Harris, the project manager. <laughs> to the mural arts communications team. They always pull up a miracle. <laughs> and so don't forget to come to the dedication. More importantly, don't forget to, like what you heard here today, keep it in your mind, keep it in your heart and go forward, and we know that you're gonna change the world. We always say that art ignites change, but I actually believe that it's the combination of people who are here today, great civic leaders, amazing citizens, and dedicated young people who, as Ernell said, you will take that torch and move forward and make our world a better place. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Okay, I think that's a wrap. <laughs>